somebody from our local government said, and you expect people to spend money to stay in these trailers? And it wasn't until after we had created it and they would come back and be like, oh my God, this is amazing. I had no idea this is what you guys were trying to do. Hi, I'm Zach and uh, my wife and I created Flamingo Springs Trailer Resort. Flamingo Springs Trailer Resort is a 1950s Palm Springs inspired travel trailer resort. So we have six trailers on our property. They're from the 50s through the 70s and they are themed, really quirky, over the top themes. And they're in a semicircle around a pool. Some of the most fun nights, I think, are when people come and they haven't planned where they're gonna stay. So usually what we do is we give them all the keys and they put them in a hat or a bowl and they just draw who's gonna stay where. The trailers consist of the one with the trailer, which is our ode to friends. It was one of the first themes, actually the first theme that we came up with. We said if we do this, we have to have a trailer that looks like Monica and Rachel's apartment. The one with the trailer is our most popular trailer. It's got a full-size queen bed in it um, and a little seating area that is modeled after Central Park. We even made like a coffee sign with the same decals as some of them on Central Park. And the other side of the trailer is modeled after Monica and Rachel's apartment. So you've got the purple and the teal and the yellow frame on the door. We've got mismatched kitchen chairs and a tacky floral bedspread. People get really excited about that one. When we'd finished that one and we, we kind of stood back and looked at it, we're like, you know, I don't know a ton about remodeling trailers, but I think maybe we can pull this off. We have the Haight-Ashbury. We both love the 70s, so we wanted to do something that sort of fit into that hippie world. We've got some retro wallpaper that's straight off Etsy from the 70s. You're gonna find green shag carpet in the ceiling. It's a lava lamp and records. I actually couldn't find fabric from the 70s, so I found floral dresses and had them cut up and made into pillows. So it's, it's a pretty authentic one. It's fun, it's lots of color. We have the Pour Some Shasta On Me, which is our tribute to the glam rock of the 90s, that cheesy glam rock world I thought would be fun to do. We have the Horn, which is our Old West Saloon trailer, inspired by the dive bar that we met and fell in love in. We have Candy Cane Lane. I found these like amazing nutcrackers that this man had cut out and painted for his wife. So we planned the whole deck, you know, around them. They're the railing. We're very detail oriented. Zach's worked in the theater and I did set stuff before this, so details are kind of our specialty. We were searching for something that was secluded, enough out of town that it felt like a retreat. And so when we pulled up, we were really intimidated. You could not drive up the land. It was too steep, so we had to park and get out and walk. It was really intimidating to start from scratch, but it was also kind of beautiful that we got to make it exactly what we wanted. Trailers are parked in a semi-circle like that with the intention of sort of bringing strangers together. It just allows people to laugh and not take themselves too seriously and maybe meet some people that they wouldn't otherwise want to talk to and, and create a friendship. The game room, we have a half kitchen that is shared between the guests. We have uh, several seating areas. We have a take and leave library. We have an enormous board game shelf, some retro video games, a pretty large VHS collection. We have a pool table, ping pong. We've got an old jukebox with fun music. My dad and I would always take road trips together and we would always listen to oldies music. And for my 12th birthday, he bought me a jukebox. He passed away when I was 20. But Zach and I had a conversation one time about what's the one thing you've gotten rid of that you regret. And mine was the jukebox. And so he found the jukebox like in New Jersey and bought it and restored it and filled it with the same records and had it at a rehearsal dinner as my wedding gift. So pretty special. We spent a lot of time playing games outside, um, the ladder ball and horseshoes and the BB gun range. Towards the end of the night, they'll have dinner in the game room and migrate in here a little bit and start playing pool, listen to the jukebox, and then end the night with the campfire. We have a lot of fun with the merch. We try to hire local designers to do everything. So we had one guy do our t-shirts. The muralist 
He does a lot of stuff around town, Jason Jones, to paint the front of the building. One of the best and most frequent compliments that we get is that, you know, is our hospitality, which makes me feel good. It's one of the reasons we wanted to do this is because we like, we like to throw parties, we like to take care of people. Before we lived in Prairie Grove, we lived in Los Angeles. We wanted to create something together, build a business. Something where we could raise a family, we could be together, and we could provide a space for people to relax, people to be creative. I think Flamingo Springs filled a couple of areas of things that we wanted to do. It allowed us to work from home and, and raise our kid together, and it gave us the creative opportunity that I think we both needed. I just kind of weirdly all fell into place. 